But anyway, I just feel like I'm being completely gaslit by those. Stop casting hot guys as psychopaths and expecting me not to want to stay with them. You would be Ted Bundy's easiest prey. Yeah, if he was Zach Efron, which he was. Yeah. You know, it's just, come on, guys. Well, I'm sure there's... Give me a break. I, at the end of that Ted Bundy movie, I w- he, didn't, uh, he didn't do it. He had me fully convinced. Lost cause, I guess. Is that but... can- Am I going to get canceled for that? No, no, no. I don't think you'll get canceled, but I think that we're opening up a can of worms for some DMs to be yeah. slid into. Yeah, whatever. I mean, I'm just saying it's not my fault. Holy smokes. Crazy dreams last night, actually. Okay. Do you want to tell me? I So I had a dream mod Apatow. So I don't know. I'm in like a bedroom that wasn't mine, but I'm laying on the ground. And I'm. someone gave me a sandwich, like a BLT. Yeah. Except there was ham on it, deli ham. That's how you know it's a dream. HBLT. And not, and not reality. Right. Because they don't make them like that. <laughs> I've looked. And I'm like... I'm like, I'm going to like sneak a quick bite of this sandwich before yeah. bed because it was, I was like, it's not going to, it doesn't save well overnight. That was my thought first. And then I go to take this huge bite and I look over and Maude Apatow is standing there in a, in a, uh, like Jack be nimble, Jack be quick, Jack jumps over that candlestick type of outfit. Like the I'm pajamas. I'm actually, believe it or not, not familiar with that type of outfit. The pajamas basically. that are like one gown. Oh, okay. That are like unisex. Like Victorian and era. have... And they have the, no, 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 not Victorian. Just like a big, comfy unisex okay. dress. Yeah. Um, And with the hat, the sleepy hat. Okay. And I was like, no. Like an elf hat, yeah. kind of. Sure. I don't know what an elf hat is. <laughs> but she just was walking in and was just like, and I was like, of course. And I said this to her. I said, of course, of course you would walk in and make <laughs> eye contact with me while I'm eating this sandwich. This HBLT. Yeah. That is really funny. H Club. H- H- Club. HBLT Club. Yeah. We've all been a part of that. We've all been a part of that. I had my go-to stress dream, which like, you know how like once a month people will have dreams about like showing up to class naked or not knowing the answers to tests or teeth falling out. Mine is always driving and my brakes don't work, which according to Google is a symbol for feeling out of control and like you have no control in your life. But I feel fine. So I'm not sure where that's coming from, but I had it last night. Uh, Who knows? I I have the dream all the time that I'm going... I like realized at the end of a semester that I didn't go to one class because I forgot that I signed up I for it. I had that too. And I, I, there's a final. Mm, and It's I, giving me shivers. Just, I know. Yeah. And I didn't know about it. I also keep having dreams about celebrities. And I just remembered another one. I was at Drake's birthday party performing by a pool. And I was supposed to be performing his own songs for him for some reason. But all I could remember were lyrics to Usher songs. Huh. Interesting. Imagine that stress. Yeah, that is really stressful. So if I if I tried to unpack that, I, I, it's just the same thing as going to that final on the last day of class. That's funny and because I'm always googling like, what does it mean when your teeth fall out in your dream? Like, what does it mean you're when your when your brakes don't work? Like, what does it mean when you're at a Drake concert and you can only remember Usher song? Right. It's just the typical. <laughs> yeah, like, the textbook typical. Yeah, dream. Google search will will generate it, that. If your teeth are falling out, which I have all the time, yeah, it's supposed to mean you're pregnant. Oh, I thought it was again lack of control. It's it's you're pregnant and maybe I'm pregnant with a good idea. That could you could be pregnant with so many different things I can't even begin to imagine. It's just or gonna list take them off. Nine months for me to figure out what yeah. it is. Yeah. Um the reason I was late today yeah. to record is I went to that coffee shop by my house and there's they only open one register. And I finally asked an employee, like, why do you do this? And they were like, Because it makes us look busier. And so people are like, We wanna come here. But this guy, this guy behind me, you know that voice that I always do that's kind of funny? He did the voice. What? The one that gives me the heebie-jeebies? He taps me on the shoulder. I'm like waiting there and I have my dead AirPods in because they make me feel safe. Yeah. Like I'm on a, like on a. Noise canceling on or off? I lost those. So I'm I'm back to my OG. Okay. Which I actually prefer the AirPod ones because. Oh my God. That's a hot take if I've ever heard one. Well, I, I like the noise canceling, but 
they die so fast. And the my old ones, they're just like a Nokia phone. Like they never die. I'll, I'll leave them out of the case overnight, put them in the next morning. Wow. They sell like 70%. I feel like my new pros hold battery longer. Well, I'm going to give it another shot. But okay. anyways, I'm, I'm in line and I, I have the headphones in. So he taps me. He's like an older dude. Taps me and I take out my dead AirPod. I'm like, uh-huh. yeah. Like, yeah. I'm like, it, yeah. I, it, I've got Usher on the line. I've got Usher on the line and I'm trying to figure out the lyrics yeah. of Drake's song. And he goes, you know, <laughs> you know, if they would just open both of these checkout lines, the flow of the place would just start to make more sense. And I was like, I fully agree with you. <laughs> and he's like, you know what I mean? If they would just open the second line. And I'm like, you're, you're screaming. And we're about four feet from the guy. Like, I'll, I'll sign your petition. That when you do that voice, I can't. It's out of body for me because that is the voice of like all of my ancestors, like old Jewish men. Yeah. And seeing that voice come from like a young, like little surfer boy, mm. it just is very like jarring. Very jarring. I can't even explain it. Like full FBCs, full body chills, up and down my body. So. Well, that was yeah. That's why I was like. That's what happens to me when you use that voice. I agree with your ancestor yeah. at the coffee shop this morning, who should have, who was like fully right. And I was on his side. He was yelling. Um, I did pop my AirPod back in. Yes. But I was like, told, yes. Yes, you stay. You stood with him. Yes, I stand with you. Day, yeah. yeah. Well, it's good to know that you made a friend this morning. Oh, I would get him on the pod. Yeah, I, we're gonna have to turn the volume way down. He was, like <laughs> said, he was, he was screaming. But, um, so okay, we're back. Yeah. Guys, welcome, welcome back to Brooke and Connor make a podcast. It's been we had a two parter yeah. last time, so we weren't actually recording last week. So I am forgetting a little bit. How to have a conversation just in general with you, with anyone. Um, so it's a learning curve. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Happy two year anniversary. Oh my God. Happy two year anniversary for having two weeks to flatten the curve. COVID is officially almost two years old. Yeah. No, it is. It's two years. It, it was yeah. Two yeah. Years, two years ago yesterday, they declared it. They declared the who that we totally just like dismantled and, uh-huh. and retired. Right. Um, hats off to who they, they declared it a national, like uh, a right. pandemic yeah. two years ago yeah. yesterday. Wow. Yeah. Um, where were you two years ago today when the who made that declaration? You know what? I'll tell you exactly where I'm from and I'm getting step by step from my Snapchat memories, Yes, which are hilarious and so naive and sweet to me because I was packing up my bags for my apartment, my other apartment in LA when I first moved here uh-huh. when I was working at bird and I packed like the smallest duffel bag and I was like, it's gonna be, I'm so excited to work from home right. for a week. Right. Like, I'm going to go down to Newport. My friends are there. So you had, work had given you a week off? For the first time ever, they were like, hey, we're just going to, because my other Snapchats were like, my coworker who I sit right next to is experiencing flu-like symptoms. Right. And I was like, this is, I mean, like, I'm not nervous at all because it yeah. wasn't even declared by the who Right. Yet. And they had gone home and I was like. I'm going to lean into this and be like, yeah, I don't want to get sick at all. I didn't really get, I didn't really, I never right, get sick. Right. So I was like, and that was before we knew anything. So I was like, I don't care if I get sick, right. but if they're going to let me get a week off, right. I'm going to go work from home. My job was basically fake anyways too. But, um, I got the Snapchat, the Snapchat memory was like, I'm so excited to work from home. I think I got laid off the next day. <laughs> <laughs> so I went back up from Newport and packed the rest of my right. stuff in a larger duffel bag. Um, but yeah, it was, it was a sweet time. Yeah, I was teaching preschool yeah. and feeling sick, but I you oh my god I forgot you were like patient, patient zero. zero. I was I I really think I started the at least the Philadelphia spread, but I remember feeling sick. But like as much as we knew about COVID was like it's flu like symptoms. You're gonna have it like a lot of respiratory issues, and for me it was just like I'm exhausted. My stomach is in shambles. Yeah. I didn't have any sort of cold. So I was like, I obviously don't have COVID. Like went into work like pr- sick yeah. because you don't really get days off. Right. Um, and then we closed that day. And then the next day I was like, something is wrong with my body. Um, called the doctor and they were like, if you don't have a cough, you're fine. Then I lost my taste and smell. Yeah. This was still like in the March teens, like March 19th or something. And my doctor was like, I've never heard of that. You're fine. Called me back the next day and ordered me a test. Had to drive an hour and a half to a testing facility <sighs> with people in like hazmat suits where I had to roll down my window and they stuck the thing up my nose. And then three weeks later, they call me back and we're like, you have COVID. And I thought I was going to die because you didn't know like what was going to happen if you had COVID. 
I didn't die. No. But I, it, like, it lasted, like, probably five months. Like, that COVID round one, phase one, was, like, on and off exhaustion, like, Whoa. fatigue, like, and I never had a cold. It's so weird. So, I had mono right before COVID. Right. And it was the exact same test, like, the exact same symptoms. And I was like, oh, I got, I already got it. Right. Like, there's no way. But I, apparently I didn't. But they kept testing for mono and I was like, they were like, they were like, it's okay. It's going around UCLA. I'm like, I'm an adult with a 401k. Right. So I actually haven't been hanging around on campus <laughs> that much. But and I was like, okay, I'm just going to lean into that. Right. I do look 14. Right. But um, crazy, 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 crazy. I remember we were just like, uh, we bought like an air purifier so that when we got our groceries from the store, we locked them in a closet and uh-huh. would, would oxidize and it was from amazon it was like 150 dollars, but we were scared of like the germs getting home from the grocery wow. store wow oh. remember the fades of everyone clorox wiping the groceries yeah i mean that's wow. like, exactly what we were doing um wow but yeah i mean crazy how far we've come i low-key miss it i was just gonna say there is something about the smell of bleach and tiger king blasting from the tv that is like oddly peaceful. You know what it was? I can tell you what it was. A collective experience. It was. It was for the first time in so long, everybody had to stop. There was no like, yeah. you know, it was like everybody's getting laid off. It was like level playing field for yeah. once. And it was also like, it's so confusing that everybody in every role and everyone you look up to stopped for a second and wasn't doing anything because we didn't know what was going on. That is. And so I was true. just like, and I don't, everyone was outside taking walks. It was. It was. It was really like fucking bad but it was like honestly like, like we had a bit of a come to jesus moment collectively right, right i think we have a lot to be thankful for those for those early days of of it's like a very specific feel like yeah yeah i, yeah. I mean i do have wouldn't, wouldn't trade it for the world i was feeling like a little bit nostalgic as well because you know when you hear those tiktok sounds of what was trending on tiktok march 2020 yeah of i'm trying to think of one I like, can think of one. Okay, think. What is it? Give it to me. That's where. That's when Doja Cat became famous. Like no one knew who Doja You're Cat so was. So right. You're so right. So like, or just did a bad thing. Oh my! Like those specific. Like give me. I ain't gotta get naked for no time. Uh, yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Like those. Oh damn. Early COVID. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Uh, no, you know what? The baby. Uh huh. Um, Rip. He. That's did when he, he became famous too. No, he's just canceled. Oh. Um. Anyways, yeah, I think we both we all agree. I miss yeah, yeah. I miss that. I did miss the that. days where nothing you had nothing to do. I locked inside because you, you had you couldn't yeah, do anything. It was so good. it was just a weight off your shoulders. Anyway, we could go Let's on about forward. that forever. I, know. I could I could reminisce I know, about I know about I know I know early days of COVID. I could too. The pandemic. I could too. Um, did you do anything fun this weekend? Um, I have friends in town from school. Yeah, you know Hunter. Yes. Um, so I wanted to leave LA so bad. Because I've done basically a copy and pasted weekend for the past six weeks where I do the exact same thing mm-hmm. Friday and Saturday and then yeah. Sunday I yeah. don't do anything. Um, and he was like, I really, you guys seem like you have so much fun. I was like, let's go to Joshua Tree. Let's go to Big Sur. And he's like, I kind of just want to do exactly what you've done for the past six weeks. Uh, okay. It looks really fun. It's really fun. But um, so we did that. And then so just I, like going out and stuff. Yeah. Just like you go to all the staple places in Venice and mm-hmm. LA and mm-hmm. whatever. We did have... Uh, Something exciting happened on Saturday morning. We, <clears throat> so one of my friends, Matt, that lives down the street, he, his roommate was out of town. So we all just like stayed there after we like bar hopped a little bit on Friday and uh, woke up really early. Logan, my cousin, yes, wakes up and hits the, the Peloton, the bike in the house. Like, cause she wakes up at like seven and she starts hitting it. And then like I wake up cause I hear it. And then she's, I get a Snapchat from her and she's zooming in on this. She's looking out the window and there's this homeless dude, like white dude with dreads. Um, you can, you can imagine, you can picture that. And, uh, she sends a Snapchat with the caption. This guy is so hot. <laughs> and she like gets off the Peloton and showers or whatever and then goes and she's like, Matt, can I go get, borrow a pair of sweatpants? He's like, yeah, it, they're, every, all my sweats are like in the laundry right now in the garage. Uh-huh. She goes out to the garage. 
to and try to seduce this man? No, to get the sweatpants. Oh, okay. Because she wants to just I be... thought she wanted to seduce him in her sweat. No, no, no. She, okay. she wants to put them on and be comfy. Okay, one track mine. So, Sorry. Right. Yeah. She. So she goes and she. there's nothing in the dryer. And she walks back up and she goes, hey, there's nothing in the dryer. And he goes, what? And he, he walks down and all his laundry is in his car. And he looks in his car and all of his stuff is in his car. His golf clubs, like all this stuff. And so we all wake up and like his car is like loaded up and ready to go and his keys aren't in it. And so he walks out and we're all standing right there, walks out to this, this homeless dude. And he's like, Hey, have you seen like anything suspicious? He's like, Oh yeah. Me and my buddy just packed up that car and we're going to steal it. (laughs) Just like tells us. And he was like, okay, so that's my car. (laughs) Oh, okay. See what you're saying. Putting a pin in that. That's my car. <laughs> so that's going to go ahead and be like my my vehicle that I own. Um, and he's like, sure. oh, yeah, OK. So me and my buddy like packed it up and we're just going <laughs> to we're just going to take off like the most opposite of Chalant. Just like casual, just like pet. Nonchalant. If you Nonchalant. Will. Yeah. <laughs> the opposite oh, I couldn't of think of it. Yeah, I couldn't think of the word. Um, and so he's like, OK, can I just like caught like gotcha. Can I just have my keys back? And the guy's like, no. Nah. Like, we're going to take the car. He had the key? Yeah, and it was just like... What had stopped him from driving away at that point? It's push to start, and I don't think he knew how Uh, to start it. Sure. I genuinely don't, because it was ready to go. It was already all packed up. Catlocked and loaded. Yeah, and he just was like, uh, like, I'm like waiting. His buddy wasn't there, so we had to call the cops, and the cops are like... First of all, I don't know if everybody was just really horny, but Uh the girls were like... Like invite them to come to brunch with us. Like it was like it was honestly felt so LA because <laughs> they were all like they looked like they were acting as cops uh-huh. in CIS or something. It was just I was just like, why is everyone here buff and in like perfect faded haircut? Like, and they were like, okay, so here's the keys back. Do you want us to like do anything? And I was, and we were like, I don't like. What do you do? And they're like, well, you can like press charges. And we were like. On Saturday, like, how did he get the keys? He had to have come inside. We did go ahead and leave the garage open that night, so and he the just, keys were sitting in the garage in the car. Sure, yeah, okay, yeah. So we wow. got. Wow. I mean, I said we got broken into. We 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 invited him into our home, and I guess invited him to just take off in the car. It that was a, it was is... a good way to get the the morning started like really early. And then did he just walk away? He walked away, and he found a piece of. Um, like plastic sign signage that's about like the size of a poster, like a you know. And he, we're looking at him out the window. He just like kind of walks walks off with his bike, and pulls a sharpie out of his pants, and just does the most gorgeous abstract piece of art, and then just sets it next to the dumpster. We went out. We're getting it framed. Oh my gosh, that's a really good story. Thank you for sharing. Sure, I'll take a picture of the the painting. Please, and then send it. I'll send it in. Send it in, and we we can insert here. Should have brought that visual. Anyways. Wow. So that that was my exciting weekend. That is really cool. It's funny, we took a week off, and I blinked, and like I didn't do anything, I don't think. I did nothing, and somehow have completely changed my life since the last time I saw you. Oh, yeah. Or the last time we were here together. How so? I joined... Equinox. Nice. And I have I've gone from never stepping foot into a gym and never working out and like judging people who work out, not w- judging people who work out, but judging people who ha- l- l- lead more of a like fitness inspired lifestyle to I have not left that gym for one day. I'm there 2 hours every single day busting my little butt off. Busting busting my little a little nut. You're busting all over on, on that treadmill. I hear a lot of people are busting all over you. We, Knox. me, and a lot of our f- mutual friends joined. We have parties in the steam room. I am having. I'm not joking. The the time of my goddamn life. That's so good. And I never thought I would. I feel like I've just like I feel stronger than the last time I was here. I feel like you look stronger. This chair is. I'm I'm supporting this chair more than this chair is supporting me. This time. Oh, I was, I was saying like you are one with me. You stand. Yeah, I mean no, I'm. It's about that time of year when people start working out outside, and I'm like, get the fuck inside. Yeah. Don't do that. I I wouldn't do that outside. I would never participate in that kind of behavior outside in public. But inside, in the comfort of Equinox, with my playlist, it is really, I am just a woman. Yeah. I mean, Equinox is like, 
And the reason I joined there in the first place is because I've paid to go to a gym before, like a hundred dollars a month, and never gone. Yeah. So I'm thinking maybe if I pay like three times that amount, I'll go. Right. And I and I did. You found and I invested in myself. The sweet spot. The sweet spot is to is to bankrupt yourself over fitness, and right. and you will become fit. Well, and and that's on par. There's a couple places that have a viscerally sexual air about them uh-huh. equinox is one i didn't say anything about a sexual air i'm just i'm just i mean we're about to uh, do you, you not say that you wanted some smut written about you and your trainer i didn't get there yet oh, okay but sorry to and just... i didn't say smut i said fan fiction completely different i don't know the difference oh i can explain it to you but i have he's not my trainer i will tell you okay so basically at equinox you get a few free perks and one of those perks is a free one-on-one training session so I took I took them up on that because I'm taking advantage of every free thing that comes my way, obviously. Yeah. And it's like an, a fitness assessment. So they assess where you are from a fitness standpoint um, and also show you what to do. That was my understanding of what the assessment was. So I walk in and I had this girl. I'm going to change her name just should she be watching because she says she's also a comedian. Um, Jen. Okay, let's say her name is Jen. I walk in, Jen is standing there. Her name is actually going to be Jen. It's not Jen. I walk in, Jen is standing there. Jen is a doppelganger of Trisha Paytas, which isn't really relevant to the story, but just so you guys can get a visual. Jen leads me into a side room at Equinox that I've never seen before, like closet-like. And it's just like, it looks like a little like lie detector almost is in there. And I felt like I was in an interrogation room. What that was was a BMI calculator attached to a scale. So she was like, all right, if you can just hop on this for me. And I don't weigh myself. I haven't weighed myself since high school. It's not a it's not a practice that I like to participate in. And when I get weighed at the doctor, I don't look. And they always say to the doctor, like, you do not have to look, whatever. So I was like, oh, do I have to weigh myself? And she was like, yeah, that's part of the assessment, just so we can kind of measure your starting point and where you are. And for me, it's not about how much I weigh. It's not about the number. It's about like, you know, how you feel and, right. you know, whatever. So I'm like, okay, sure, I'll get on the scale, but I'm I'm not going to look, okay? And then she was like, mm, I mean, this is for you, so you know where you are. So I don't know why you wouldn't look. That's the most annoying part about working out and, like, feeling good is it, like, they've they've always been right. It's always been, like, if you don't want to work, like, that's on you. Like, the harder you work, the better. Well, the most annoying sure, thing. Sure, but that doesn't, I don't, I still, she should not have said that. I don't have to look at my weight. You can measure your fitness in every other way besides that number. I mean, in the sense that she's the professional that you paid for. No, I don't think she's the professional that I paid for, and I'm getting to that. And also, if a girl or anyone says, I don't want to look at that, your answer should be, okay, not, well, it's for you. That's just... I don't know the ins and outs of equal I, I Well, I know the ins and outs of what's right and what's wrong, and that was wrong. I thought I've thought about it over and over. It's a gray area. Yeah, not really though. But anyway, I looked. Right, yeah. that's the moral of the story. T- immediate, immediate well, tears. You, I mean, you had to. It's 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 like, it's like when you post a TikTok and you're like, I really don't want to look, and then it like does horribly. You're like, but I did it. You know, no, I looked again. Not okay. Re- well, I, I think I, that there was a lot more we could have done that was, but beyond weighing. You know, I think that the number on the scale is not an indicator of sure. sure okay i obviously started like the kind of crying where it's like you're not blinking the tears are just rolling because that was again it's a number on the scale doesn't matter but that number was about 16 pounds heavier than i had thought it was going to be and i was being generous of where it was going to be so and she was like oh are you upset <laughs> no no bitch i'm completely fucking fine why do you ask <laughs> so anyway we sit down now we're going over my bmi calculator which is in the overweight column which that, that, that's a very dated system right so i'm like why are you even doing this in the first place i couldn't stop crying she goes <laughs> <laughs> she let's reschedule i said oh okay that's fine let's reschedule <laughs> you should have you should have never mind what nothing okay so we rescheduled this was monday we rescheduled on wednesday at noon uh i show up wednesday at noon she's not there I wait 10 minutes. We're supposed to meet at noon. I wait till like 12.10. I go to the front desk. And I was like, hey, I'm supposed to meet with Jen. There's two people working at the front desk. We don't know a Jen. I said, I had a, I had a training session with Jen on Monday. 
here is the information via my Equinox app. They're like, okay. They call down like the head. I don't know if he was the manager or what, but he was above them. And he was like, oh, oh, okay. I think I know who you're talking about. Let me go find her. He's gone for another 15 minutes. Comes back at like 1230, 1240. I've been standing there in at the front desk looking like an idiot for the past 40 minutes. Can't find her. Sorry. How big is I, Equinox? Big, but like y- you should know where like your trainers are, I guess. Okay, so what happened? N- nothing. She never showed up. I My theory is that she was she's a psychopath or a sociopath i'm not really sure on the difference that goes around to different gyms poses as a trainer hijacks the scale to make it 15 or in my case 16 pounds heavier than you would expect it to be and then inflicts emotional torture on you that was my theory and then i did see her later training someone else and she did text sorry i missed your session but anyway i like my theory better and i never responded to her text so i'm sticking with my theory of her being a a uh, hijacker and that is what it is so i that it that number that we saw on the scale hijacked yeah yeah but anyway when i was trying to confirm if she was a, actually a trainer or not there's these there's this huge wall of pictures of all the trainers and she's not on it so that's something to consider i think she's probably a new trainer or a sociopath but on that on that wall of images is this this man and his name was Logan and I couldn't help but think of a life in which Logan was my trainer because he is like scary scary gorgeous in the sense wouldn't even be able to have a conversation with him would just admire from afar and so I did post on my Instagram story would anyone be able to write a fan fiction about me and this trainer Logan did you get any responses I have never gotten more responses to any Instagram story in my life, and one came within 10 minutes that was a fully fleshed fan fiction. And that goes back to your question, the difference between fan fiction and smut. Smut is like fully erotica, which can be in fan fiction, but fan fiction doesn't have to be smut. It's like more romantic. It's, it more can, yeah, fan fiction can be smut, but it doesn't have to be. Where in the case of me and Logan. can be a square, but bingo. a square can't be a rectangle. Bingo, bingo, bingo. I'm picking up what you're putting down. You really are. Same. Both are pretty... Inherently sexual, though, like it's like, yeah, it's just a matter of like sexual horniness or emotional horniness at the end of the day. Oh, and I was feeling emotionally horny for Logan, the did, trainer. Did have you met him? No, I haven't even seen him. Imagine the day I see him after everything that's been built up in the. F- I anyway, the fan fiction. Imagine if he's a fan of Lady Efron. Well, somebody responded to that and was like, "Genuine question," and they didn't say this in a mean way. Like, genuine question: If he saw this, like, would you be embarrassed? Like, do you get embarrassed by what you do, or would you be excited if he saw? And that's something that I thought about, and I think, yeah, I'd be horrified. And yeah. I have to actually start considering that because, like, it's not like I have so many followers on Instagram, but like enough where it's like, if somebody who knew Logan from Equinox saw it and sent it to him like game over babe it's pretty much you're pretty much one degree of separation away from everybody on the planet you could be if you if you do the math and write the geometrical proof on it yeah right. I mean sometimes I'm like I'll wear a shirt or something and someone knows the person who founded the company and it's like hardly in a snap on an Instagram story that I'll post and then I'll like be connected with them. Yeah. That, that That is a little worrisome. It is worrisome. But anyway, to answer her question, I would probably be mortified. Yeah, but I I would like to not think about Logan seeing that. But that girl sent me that fan fiction that she yeah. had written. I posted that on my story. That's what, that's what I meant to say. I've never gotten more responses in my life. People asking for the next chapter. People were so invested in the story of me and Logan. I was so invested in the story of me and Logan. And I was wondering if you would want to even read a piece of the fan fiction. Can that, I read it? Yeah, I would really like you to. Okay. And okay, she, so. Yeah, this is it. We have it pulled up here. Yeah. Um, it's called Brooke and Logan. Pretty simple. And, and I really want to give her a shout out. I want to give a shout out to Janie, who wrote this. Not only wrote this, but is an incredibly talented writer. And I hope she knows that people are begging for more of her work. So, Janie, if you're seeing this. You are super, super talented, and I hope you are okay with me saying your name. Thanks, Jane. <laughs> I just wanted to give you the shout-out that you deserve. Okay, so it's titled Brooke and Logan. Yeah. I think we 
that's pretty to the point. Right, right. So having lost count, Brooke categorized the number of reps she'd done as enough. In fact, it had been enough. Since the first one, her trainer clearly felt differently. Just five more. Come on, you've got this. Maybe she should die. Maybe she would die before the end and wouldn't have to finish. Four. Again. If you're so excited about it, why don't you just do the rest, Brooke thought, tuning out Logan. Logan's Logan's coaching. And you're done. He beamed as Brooke detached from the machine and dropped to the floor. So me. God, Logan, are you trying to kill me? Brooke panted breathlessly as she was covered in sweat, sore from the day before and in desperate need of her afternoon nap. This girl knows me so well. <laughs> After all that, I think you're already stronger than me, Logan smirked. That's anyway, that was the first little Damn. bit. I'm doing I'm doing this. I'm okay. Do, I'm doing the just there what she sent. I'm okay. doing one more page. Okay, please. Because I'm actually curious. I didn't It's you want to keep reading. I know. Relieved to be done, she grabbed her bag and headed for the showers. Hey Brooke, Logan called quietly. She turned around. You did good today. <laughs> I think I'm gonna need a wheelchair now. <laughs> <laughs> he ignored her comment. I'm serious. You did good. You did well is what he should have said. She didn't have the breath to even try to respond. Logan would probably get annoyed if she tried crawling to the showers, but it would be easier than walking. Oh, and also, yes, she turned back around. If you didn't like that today, you're going to hate tomorrow, Logan added before taking a swig of water. Oh my God, Brooke muttered. As much as she dreaded the next workout, there was something else bubbling inside her chest. A tiny inkling of excitement. Like, how did that make you feel? I'm I felt like, a tiny inkling of excitement. I have more than a tiny inkling. Ooh, <laughs> what's going on? <laughs> I mean, that is so good. Yeah, no, that, that was really and well I done. I got probably 500 responses to that saying, where is the next chapter? Hey, guys, we want to take a quick break to thank a sponsor of today's episode, Apostrophe. Have you ever had an acne breakout come at the worst time possible? I have, for a fact. Had we all happen. have. Uh, I mean... I talked about it before, picture day. One of the worst, most traumatic days of my life every every time we had it. Was it on the chin? Uh, no, like middle of my forehead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it was, and you can't wear a hat in elementary school or anything, so I just had to raw dog it. Right. Um, well, Apostrophe is a prescription skincare company that offers science-backed oral and topical medications that are clinically proven to help clear acne. Apostrophe connects you with a board-certified dermatologist who will create a personalized treatment plan that is perfectly tailored to your unique skin. Simply fill out Apostrophe's online quiz about your skin goals and medical history, then snap a few selfies, your, and your dermatologist will create your customized treatment plan. Apostrophe treats all types of acne, from hormonal acne to facial acne, and even chest knee, back knee, and butt knee. They treat breakouts from head to toe. It's nice to know that you had a real dermatologist and that your plan is tailored submitting your visit is quick and you don't need to schedule an appointment yes and thank you for those visuals that yep. you were able to provide we have a special deal for our audience save 15 dollars off your first visit with an apostrophe provider at apostrophe.com slash b and c when you use our code b and c that's b a n d c this code is only available to our listeners to get started, just go to apostrophe.com slash BNC and click begin visit. Then use our code BNC to sign up and you'll get your first visit for only $5. That's apostrophe.com slash BNC, that's B-A-N-D-C, and use that code BNC to get your dermatologist crafted treatment plan for $5. And we thank Apostrophe for sponsoring this podcast. Whew. I guess we'll never know unless she responds. She's got, I mean, she has to write more. The people are dying. And I think, I genuinely think she could get published. I think that is so, imagine how I'm going to feel when I see Logan after that. I mean, she's really setting it up. She's really teeing you up and Logan up as well. I wonder, I, you I've got to send you the picture of Logan. I don't know if, I don't want to put him on blast for everyone, but. Yeah, I'm a little curious about what Logan, yeah. oh, what Logan's God, got up his sleeves. Until you see what Logan's got up his sleeve. What do you think it is? Yeah, something awesome. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, what's up? Like a Yu-Gi-Oh card. <laughs> um, okay. That story so I mean, Logan. that that was really cool. So yeah. So I would join the gym. I've also been knitting a lot and yeah. watching a lot of TV while I do knit. I've been knitting that. If you guys saw the last episode, and we can put a picture in here too. Our friend Sally Dar, she's an amazing knitter. 
so talented. And she knit this one sweater that says flop era on it, which if you guys don't know what flop era is, it's like when you're in your flopping phase in life and specifically in our case on the internet, yeah. just when things just aren't performing as well as they used to. So um, I took on that project and I thought it I was doing well. And then I was at Sally Dar's house last night and looking at her sweater and it looked, then I realized that mine looks like a second grader did it while I think it looks bl- good. blindfolded. I think it looks good. Um, It's okay. But uh, my goal is to wear that sweater next Wednesday on the pod. So, and I think we can get there. That's a good goal to have. Yeah. Um, what have you been watching on, on TV? I have Anything? watched, I've been watching so many movies, so I don't even have to press next while knitting. So I watched Fresh, that Sebastian Stan. I watched Fresh. What'd you think? Okay, here's my thing with Fresh. So. Flesh. No, it's Fresh. Fresh. Um, <laughs> it both makes sense. Yes. Um. And sp- spoiler, spoiler alert. Spoiler if alerts. You, if you. Haven't seen. First of all, like fresh. don't don't even see it. <laughs> like that's my first. I wouldn't. Thing. I wouldn't really worry about these spoiler alerts. So honest, it's you can it's still Seba- watch it. it. You can still watch it. Yeah. It's Sebastian Stan, and I forget the other girl's name. Uh, J- uh, she's the girl in Normal People. Fel- the- she's the girl in Normal People. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, she she looks really famous, but no one knows her name. Um, she was really good. But Daisy. I don't know. I don't know the Edgar name. Edgar Jones? Can we? <laughs> <laughs> that's very, if that's not her name, that was the most specific name I could have given. You nailed it. Oh, it's, oh. it's Daisy Edgar Jones. Awesome. Oh, I thought you were just saying Edgar Jones. No, like, that sounds no, I, like Daisy Edgar ins- Jones. That's an insurance awesome. agency. Um, but so I watched it because the ads that, I, that were getting shoved into my eyes on every app were so sick and well done. Uh huh. And it's the scene when they're chasing each other around the house. And I didn't know if this is like a rom com horror or right. what was going on. But they were using Heads Will Roll as the song. And I yeah. was like, this movie looks, looks fun. <laughs> so fun and like kind of scary, but like fun, yeah. like exhilarating yeah. scary. It was gnarly and dark and disturbing. It was gross. I watched it by myself on accident. Oh, I watched it um, with our friend Patrick and we were just like, what the? literal fuck but um basically the way they pitch it to you is the first 30 minutes will have you thinking one way that it's one story and then the rest will like completely throw you off and basically the first 30 minutes you think it's the sweet little rom-com and then 30 minutes in they're on a date and he drugs her and she wakes up and it turns out he is a cannibal and he's holding well i mean hostage to cut off limb her limbs slowly one by one eat them and also sell them to other people to eat. Well, that would, he's not, I mean, he, he is he eats, Hannibal, yeah. but not, that's not like, that was his, not his MO. Are you thinking more sociopath, he, psychopath killer who sells meat as well as eats it? I think he probably wouldn't have eaten it ever unless he found, like, I forget how he found out. Someone, there was like, there's a community of people who eat people, like, like an elite community. Right. And well, he I was inducted into it somehow. I don't think, like, I think his MO was, like, his agenda was to sell it to make money. Uh-huh. But I don't think it was because he was a cannibal at first. I think he ended up being like. Well, remember these- he was talking about how when he first tasted it, it was like, and then he went on and on about the taste. Holy. I mean, yeah. I see a lot of myself in Daisy Edgar Jones. Okay. Because if I was in that situation. You Guess what? The same- Stockholm syndrome, but and opposite would- of it. So you mean you actually would have been in love with him? I, I, no, no, no. Opposite of Stockholm syndrome, I wouldn't have been. You in- would have faked being in love with him like she did, yep. and then escaped. So here's where I counter you, and here's why: these movies are gaslighting me. These movies where they cast Sebastian Stan and Zac Efron as these psychopaths, and expect me not to want to spend the rest of my life with them, and tell me I'm insane for being in love with a psychopath when you're casting. Zach and Sebastian Stan. Well, Sebastian Stan is giving you an epidural and cutting off your ass cheeks. But he wouldn't have once once she pretended to be in love with him so she could escape. He fell in love with her back and then she was able to escape because she kind of gotten him in a vulnerable position. I say you went one step too far. Once he's in love with you, that's that let the story end there, live happily ever after. You, you just, know, you just, and people are gaslighting it, me for feeling that way, for saying I'm insane. I'm gaslighting you. You're I'll, casting Sebastian Stan as a psychopath. What do you expect me? I'll gaslight you. Sure. I welcome it. He's eating your ass cheeks. But he stopped. And not in a good way. Like he's eating the <laughs> flesh part. But what I'm trying to say is w- once we connected, 
in that way. Well, it, that, Once I started, I was so smart, I was able to get him to fall in love with me. You okay? Yeah, I just, <laughs> two things happened and only one I can share. <laughs> um, so I, I, I'm curious, I, like the, yeah. the one thing in my head, like after he cut off her butt, mm-hmm. I was like, what would that look like in I jeans? Was all, I was so, and she looked fine. Like, she looked totally She fine. looked compl- like nothing was wrong. Those kind of movies where like the person is fully justifying like a very, like an act of evil. I'm like, yeah. that's the freakiest part to me. He's like, yeah. hey, like it's going to be okay. Like this is, this is yeah. your life now. Yeah. Like just get used to it and just relax mm-hmm. and enjoy it. And I'm like, whoa. Uh, wait, hang on. So the part in the magazine yeah. where she, she opens the magazine and said, if, if he gave you this magazine, it means he likes you. Right. Like keep going. Right. Was that his wife? His current wife? I don't think so because I think she was also like completely fully psychotic. No redeeming qualities. No redeeming qualities of like writing. Like you have a shot. Keep trying. I think it was probably someone else that was kept in that room. And I think if you were in that room, you were special. No, it's it's the magazines. If he's giving you entertainment. That yeah. Likes you. Right. But I think it I was the wife that went full blown Stockholm syndrome because she has kids and stuff. Yeah. But when you see that her leg is cut off. Right. I think he cut off her leg, oh, fell, for, fell in love with her. For and sure. Moved her. For out. sure. I just think like she was too much of a psychopath as well to be giving those signals to, to try to help someone else. But anyway, I just feel like I'm being completely gaslit by those. Stop casting hot guys as psychopaths and expecting me not to want to stay with them. You would be Ted Bundy's easiest prey. Yeah, if he was Zach Efron, which he was. Yeah. You know, it's just, come on, guys. Well, I'm sure there's... Give me a break. I, at the end of that Ted Bundy movie, I w- he, didn't, uh, he didn't do it. He had me fully convinced. Lost cause, I guess. Is that can- am I going to get canceled for that? No, no, no. I don't think you'll get canceled, but I think that we're opening up a can of worms for some DMs to be yeah. slid into. Yeah, whatever. I mean, I'm just saying it's not my fault. Stop okay. casting Zach Efron as a serial killer and asking me to see that he's insane because I won't be able. Oh, yeah. See? But I also am looking so at we, real Ted Bundy. We've now pulled image. up an image uh-huh. of Ted Bundy and Zach Efron. And it's like, come on. Have you seen? But I think real Ted would have s- gotten me good as well. Have you seen American Psycho? No. You should watch that. I should. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, but anyways, I think, I mean, whatever I'd watch the movie. Don't watch the movie. I don't, I, don't I would, wa- I would watch it like with friends to kind of be like, haha, this is gross and insane, but it's not like something that I think is a good movie. I think the point of the whole thing was like, there are people that are charismatic and attractive. Yeah. That's the whole and that's, Bundy thing. Well, that's the whole thing. That's the whole thing. So you, they, they and do they, need yeah. to gaslight you to watch the show if oh, they put some point, some, Connor, fugly, some fugly nobody yeah, as that point. role you'd be like how would that i ever? guess what i'm just saying is i'm their easiest victim it has- i'm literally going on youtube.com for tons of people to know that i am the well, easiest victim okay of any so, so psychopath that wants me god forbid and but- still no one's gonna, no one's gonna bark <laughs> up this tree <laughs> we logan's probably gonna tune into this episode and you'll You'll be set for life. Yeah. But I, so this, those like TikToks where those girls are like, I met this guy and he's flying me out. And I've like, Your swindler? I met him like two weeks ago. No, there's like actual TikToks. Yeah. And like, like hopefully this works out. I'm like, God damn, Ted Bundy would have had like a heyday with these, with like TikTok. You know what I mean? Oh, good point. Like a couple. Thank God he wasn't around for, or though we probably would have caught him quicker. We, as in me doing my part to catch Ted Bundy, but. (laughs) Hopefully like you not showing up to set next week and me being like, where's Brooke? (laughs) Has anyone seen Ted? Um, Anywho. Yeah, yeah. that's something I watched. I watched, I don't know, I didn't bring this up with you earlier, but that Adam something with Ryan Reynolds and Mark Ruffalo and Jennifer Gardner. It's like the number one movie on Netflix. It's time travel, so it's like I can't. Uh, it's like yeah, right. yeah. It was hard. And then that other thing you told me to watch, I um, tried my goddamn hardest. So I've, if anybody's interested in uh, like tech and VC and anything like that, Super Pumped is really good. It's it's the battle for Uber, starring Joseph Joseph Gordon Levitt. 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 Yeah. <laughs> JGL. <laughs> and uh, it's really good and it's really realistic. And Brooke tried to watch it. What I did tried. you? I gave you my all. I gave you thirty minutes of my all. It's just like again, like we've discussed before, how I I don't hate Succession, but I just like can't connect to it because I cannot understand the obsession with like climbing the corporate ladder. Just like there's no. You didn't have to climb the the ladder. I 
preschool? I mean, I no, I didn't have to climb the ladder at preschool, and also like like you probably had to climb a physical. This is ladder. gonna seem like, of course, like I think everyone like you should work, and that is so important. But I don't really relate to people who make their jobs like their entire life and like their entire identity and co- like risk other things to advance in their job, like screw over, like it just like is screw over other people to benefit their own career i can wrap my head yeah i get that and it just like is not something i enjoy watching and that was what that show was yeah um i guess no real spoiler because it's based on a real uber that happened but i thought it was funny i just thought it was funny because i worked at bird obviously and the ceo of bird came from uber yeah and so a lot of the things that they were saying um and if you've ever worked in a startup or anything in tech it's like you know, obvi- the ones where it's like, we are family, like we're disrupting the industry. And it's like all like behind closed doors, like the, the executives are probably like, fuck, 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 fuck. Right. What are we going to do? What are we right. going to do? What are we going to do? Like, right. how can we like. See, for me, I'm just like, go get it. Like, go home. Take a nap. Reset. Right. Go out to dinner with your friends. Come back tomorrow's a new day. Yeah. 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 I got a little bit of uh, PTSD listening to the show because I was like, oh, damn. they full blown said the things that they at like at bird that they said at uber Whoa. when they were like start like word for word like we only need to get people to ride one time and we have them for life that i was like scary. Whoa. It's true. yeah it's really scary retention rates yeah um anyways that i like if you enjoy that stuff it is entertaining and joseph mm-hmm. G- gordon levitt yeah who reminds me of what does he remind me of he reminds me of a couple things a pebble like a round, smooth. like a smooth yeah. pebble. You um, are also ha- have pebble vibes. I I give off terracotta pot <laughs> vibes, like yeah, clay, some like, sort of my granite material. Like my favorite granite. It's I, like because you're you have such good skin. Look at my skin stretch. Yeah, I yeah. That's, Show me another. Someone, we're gonna have a lot of comments about what that's called. Look. Yeah, I see it. Just like elastic. I put on. I tried to gua sha today because I've been noticing a lack of jawline uh-huh. on my face lately. Anyways, Jordan Gordon Levitt. Jordan r- Gordon Levitt reminds me of <laughs> like a pebble um, or like a small frog. Yeah, like a one Tree of the, frog, like a small gray frog. Oh, okay. Um, or let me think. I'm gonna give one more example and then I can finish sure. my sentence. Yeah. Come on, George Joseph Gordon Levitt. He reminds me of like a. Like one of those erasers that you'd carry around. Yeah, so and smooth things. Oh, they Look, are yeah, all smooth. Yeah, let's. What was I even talking about? I, this is what happens. Yeah. I don't know. Anyways, I don't <laughs> care. He's really good in the show. Yeah. So. <gasps> Ooh. Did you see Batman? Yeah. The Batman? Yeah. Excuse me? Yeah. My, excuse my language. Um, What'd you think? You, why don't you start? Okay. I'm not going to pretend that I went in for any other reason than Rob. Robert Pattinson. Robert Pattinson. I have never seen a Batman movie, never seen The Dark Knight, don't care about superhero movies. Went to support Rob, because that's what he would have wanted. Um, overall, I I think he was great. Like, I don't have any other Batman to compare him to, but he seemed wonderful to me. I loved what he was doing with his voice. Um, he was not, and I, I don't, want to it to come across like I'm using him for his body. I would not do that. But he wasn't shirtless enough and also they only kissed twice. And there wasn't like a big romantic. I was in it for the romance. Did not feel any romance between them. I think she was gay. She's bi. She's bi. I don't know. I just didn't feel any sort of real romance between them, which I was disheartening because I went, I was there through the lens of wanting to see a romantic film. Hey. I don't think you're alone in that. Yeah. Because the ads that they put out. it thought I thought it was going to be a fan fiction, basically. That was smut. Yeah. That's what I was wanting. And they kissed like once and it was like a peck. Nothing. No passion. Hey, guess what? What? I guarantee you, you can get online and look up and. And find fan and fiction. And find some Catwoman, stuff on that. Catwoman, Batman. Yeah. Fan if when you get home. But I think it was good. And I really, really liked um, Paul Dano in it. The Rid- who played the Riddler. I thought he was really, like, I love a good psychopath, and I thought he nailed it. He looks genuinely like a psychopath in real cute. life. I think he's cute. It was his glasses. Well, guess what? You're on track if we, <laughs> if we roll back. Like, you've you've right. said you're basically into sociopaths. When he was, like, in that scene where he was in prison, and he went from, like, maniacally laughing to singing Ave Maria, I was like, aw, cute. <laughs> he can sing. Wow. <laughs> we could probably just hand this episode off to your 
Yeah. Brooke, your yeah. therapist. Yeah. Um, oh, I love her. So my thoughts are yeah. obviously like I have to say all the stuff that I couldn't, I can't get past. Okay, fine. The movie's too dark. Like, like I wanted, I constantly horary dark or bright. I kind, I wanted to constantly scroll oh. down on the screen and turn up my brightness. Right. I don't know what's going on with that whole thing, mm-hmm. too. Gotham, so so classic Whatever. Gotham, you know. Like it, the sun still comes out, mm-hmm. you know. Um, two. Here's something good. I think Christian Bale's mouth, who was the old Batman, who also plays American Psycho, yeah, is weird. Robert Pattinson has a good mouth You're for Batman. Me. So that's great. Zoe Kravitz, <laughs> love of my life. She is the most beautiful woman I have ever seen in my entire I life. Fully 100%. I came out of there th- questioning everything that I know about myself. I think that's the point. Yeah. That was the point. Her and those wigs. Oh my god. No, and okay, and then my my big thing, too long. What the f- what are we doing now? Too like, long. Why do movies have to be Four and a half hours. That's half of a work day. I thought it ended 16 different times. I was about to clap every five seconds. Um, but did you like it? You know, superhero and anti-hero movies are not for me. Uh-huh. I figured out. And the thing that I can't get past is like, when you strike gold like this, it's just like the story never actually ends. Yeah. Because you can just make shit up. Like J.K. Rowling can just and, yeah, be like, go Here, back here's this time. now. Run me my money. Yeah. And I'm like, you know what? It had the party has to end at some point. Mm-hmm. You know, that's a good point. I'm just, I, I make a new, make a new one. Right, like a new superhero. A new superhero. Okay, I hear you there. Yeah, I can't I speak don't. much to it just because I've never seen any other Batman movie and just have no. I think we could focus more on Catwoman. I think everyone can agree she is hot. Yeah, I don't know. I and mean, it, they're going to yeah. ride this Batman wave for a long time, so I don't think we'll see And Catwoman also, you'd for a while. think, like, with the press that Robert Pattinson and Zoe Kravitz are doing, like, they want you to think they're in love, but, like, they barely spoke on the screen. Yeah. Yeah, anyway, that could have been. Are they, are you dating? He, I don't, Robert's either seriously dating or engaged to Suki Waterhouse. That's sick. Sick in the sense that he's blatantly also in love with Zoe, or sick because she's Suki's. He's a good actor for yeah. a reason, but yeah. Suki is awesome. Yeah. Damn. Rob is awesome. Rob is awesome. I think he's like an awesome person, and I would know. Yeah. I'm watching right. his YouTube. Zoe's video. not dating anyone? It was her mom that was dating Channing, that is dating Channing Tate? No, it was Zoe. Jason Momoa was her stepdad? What are you, who is she dating? <laughs> So she's dating Channing. She was. So her mom is another actress, Lisa Bonet, I think, is her mom, who I always just think is Zoe because they look like twins. Yeah. So I thought Zoe was dating Jason Momoa because her mom is. But turns out Jason Momoa is Zoe's stepdad. Oh, wow. That's news to me. Yeah. I didn't Isn't know that. that interesting? Um, shoot, what was I going to say? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Oh yeah, there yeah. they are. Yeah. So yeah, Jason Momoa is is Zoe's stepdad. I thought she they look the same, Zoe and her mom. They do. There's no There's no getting around that. Yeah. That um, is really awesome. Good for them. And you saw Kristen Stewart brought I think her new girlfriend. Oh, no, I didn't see that. Yeah. But I she, you told me about She that looks yesterday. awesome. Yeah, at, she is. At uh, the critics She choice. is really gorgeous. Um yeah, that's all the TV I watched, really. Yeah. And I was over a week of TV. Yeah, yeah, two weeks of TV. Two weeks of TV. TV. I'm trying to think that I watch anything else. I told you about, yeah, I guess that's it. Both Shreks are on Netflix, so I watched those. Really, just like one of the top movies of all time. Yeah, Um. so and it's like award season right now, yeah. too. So we, we're going to have like a lot of yeah, I think award so. stuff. I need, to get, I need to get into the awards. When I watch award shows, I'm like, I don't. I watch. I don't know. Outfits. I don't yeah. know what's going on. Yeah, me neither. I haven't seen or heard any of these songs or musics, or I mean movies. <laughs> and we should we should be watching those. Yeah, it's like as people who recap current events. I know that is something that we can do. I know. No, I mean, speaking just, of current events, what? There's a few other like items that we can discuss quickly. Okay, what is it? You wanted to touch on Tom Brady's retirement and unretirement and unretirement. See, all I wanted to say about that, we've we've all known that, is I see a lot of myself in that. Yeah, me too, actually. And from several lenses. One, FOMO. Mm-hmm. You uh-huh. know? 
one is FOMO and it's like, like, he's like, okay, uh, what am I doing? You know, like right. two being around your family for too long is a little bit exhausting and yeah. it's, it's time to go to work again, especially if uh-huh. like, um, and, and three, I'm forgetting. Three. Well, I I might have three for you because the way I relate to it is every single year at the end of every single school year, I would tell people I was switching schools so that they would m- miss me and I would get attention and they would write this beautiful long message in my yearbook. And then surprise, September, I would show up, never had any intention of switching schools. That is the vibe. That is the vibe. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. No, I get that. It's like when I would beg um, for a cast, even though my arm wasn't broken. Yes just so that people would sign it it's and look Did at you me. ever try to break your arm yeah me too so and then the amount of times i was like it's sprained i, I, need, to I need to go to the er now yeah, yeah i i i just like i support him in this i wish him the best yeah, I, guess. I can't fault him it must I be would, i would do the exact same thing tom i just can't imagine how hard it must have been to go home to his multi 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 million dollar supermodel wife yeah that's hard that is for poor, anybody. Yeah, poor guy. He needs to You're be back right. on the field. And then You're an did, empath. I, did you see? Yeah, I know. I can. I I'm an empath in the sense that when people feel things, you I feel them. Yes. Um, and did you see someone bought like his last touchdown football for half a million dollars, and then he unretired, so it's no longer his last. I did mean, he refund? No, the, the you're five just, million. You're just Sol. Is that insane? That is really fucked. But if you have enough money to spend half a million dollars on a football as like a collector. I'm surprised it wasn't more. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Um, but one of my friend's uh, parents is his chef that like travels with him and like lives yeah. near them. And so she was like, they basically, well, I don't, I can't say that. Never mind. She basically like was like, yeah, he's, he's coming back wow. before oh, the, so you, before the situation. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then also in, in, in similar news, mm-hmm. people doing things for attention. Pete Davidson is going to space with, um, Jeff Bezos. Okay. How did that come about? Um, well, I'll tell you. We've got it up here on the screen. They went to dinner. Pete Davidson and Kim went to dinner with, uh, obviously Elon Musk. Sure. He's 28 years old. He's dating Kim Kardashian. They are going to. I don't know what he did in his past life, but. Let me. What is. Let me look how much he spent or like how much it costs. So Saturday Night Live comic Pete Davidson has been confirmed this week to be the next celebrity going up in the Blue Origin with Jeff Bezos to space. And basically, I can't even wrap my head around what they would have spoken about to get to that point. But. Um, <laughs> Jeff Bezos like goes to parties and like <laughs> wants to be relevant. So right. it, he's like he's like that like kid that went to college and like comes back and goes to high school parties still. Yeah. And he, yeah, it, good point. Yeah, it is really just or, bizarre. Like the adult that hangs out with like teenage TikTokers. Yeah, yeah. And I don't have anyone I'm talking about. That's not person specific. Right. But that's what it's kind of. I just like I'm awaiting Kanye's response to the space. Um, Kanye has now, He's, unless I've dreamt it, which is possible because I took melatonin last night, mm-hmm. is actually asking where people live. And he has, he said something like, I have the funds to hurt you. Not, oh. to, not to Pete specifically, but to like the person that leaked the texts. Oh, I, the, I, the guy who leaked the text, the texts apparently is Pete's friend, Dave, who I saw open for Pete once. And he's just like a sweet little small white guy with glasses who I'm in love with. Right. Which is like super interesting. But I wonder if I'm he's just, I'm, psycho psycho. I, which I would track uh, based uh-huh. on t- this episode. Yeah. Today. I don't know. Anyways, um I, would you go into not, orbit with not in I wouldn't go into orbit with with, with Ted Je- with Zach as Ted Bundy. N- so no. And for me that's like a a plus. <laughs> I don't like I I don't like space or the idea of space. I don't like I, N- Something happened to me recently where I'm like kind of scared of flying because of how high up we are. I woke up from like a nap and I was like, holy smokes, we are so high up. I almost asked the flight attendant if we could go down a little bit. <laughs> Would we be able to just lower that I, a little bit? Do we need um, to be at cruising altitude this high? And I don't know if we've told this story, but Connor and I did like a zero gravity experience once together for a brand deal <laughs> where they took us up in an actual plane with bachelor stars such as Tyler Cameron and 
I don't even Dale, Dale Moss. Moss. And they actually, we were in a full plane at fully at an altitude. Um, and the plane would go in parabolas for those of you who are watching visually. That is this shape. And it's like when it's like at the top of the parabola, you would float it because it would mimic zero gravity when go, no, or when you're, you're going, going down. down, it would mimic zero gravity and you would float. And basically, long story short, I threw up, of course, that goes without well, saying. Well, I, I just, <laughs> so you, you, we're in like flight suits. It's like me, Brooke, Tyler Cameron, Dale Moss. I'm forgetting who else we were with. Hot, hot people. Yeah, just like, like these. Yeah. Well, I first of all had a panic attack when we were going there and I, I almost bailed because I was like, I don't want to go. I don't want to risk my life right. for this thing. I had the most fun 45 minutes of my life. Yeah. You basically like you're in this giant fuselage in the shaft of this beast and you are going up like Brooke said up like and they said don't look out the window. I made the mistake of looking out the window. Yeah. So when you're looking out of a plane and you're looking at the horizon it's flat. When I looked out the plane, oh shit, it's like hard to even say. I, I when I looked out like outside yeah. of the plane and saw the horizon vertically if you can imagine looking out the plane, yeah. the horizon's yeah. like this because can, yeah. because we're going straight up in the air in like a huge plane. This and is it not hollowed like, out so that we are laying down. You're not in a seat. You're laying down, waiting to start floating. You're flat, 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 flat. So we we did the first one, and they they go through, and they're like, "This is the gravity on right on, Mars." The on first the one Mar- was Mars. On Mars. Second one's like something else, and third one's like the moon. And the moon one, you're up in the air for like thirty seconds, and if you tap with your finger, you just like start spinning and doing. I'm flips. getting really nauseous. Sorry. So okay. I'm having the time of my life with Tyler Cameron. He's we're all doing these like maniacal laughs everyone's where it's just like flipping and cracking up and oh everyone's having a blast. And I I look over. <laughs> I have this video. I'm like scanning the room. I look over. Brooke's stuck to the ceiling. She looks like a dead roach. That's like on its like. She's like going like this. Like cannot because you can't grasp at the air. Um. Anyways, that was the funniest shit I've ever seen. I'm pretty sure I started. I like went from like laughing ha 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 to. <laughs> <laughs> well, they say at the beginning before you get on, it's very rare that people get motion sick. But here's two Dramamine. That is double the recommended dose, just in case. So everybody's taking two Dramamine. I get sick anyway in those kinds of situations. I get I throw up ever like any minor inconvenience. I'm throwing up. So we get on there and like immediately like the first parabola you're floating little and I'm like okay that's great the second one you're floating a little more I'm like okay the third one is when I got stuck I, I on have the ceiling. to I I have to tell it from my point of view I have to because it's so much funnier because you went missing I was like where's Brooke where's Brooke and then I turn around they've strapped Brooke to the floor of the plane so she doesn't go floating and she has an anti gravity barf bag so that it would absorb all her yarf. <laughs> Well, they say like, okay, you're not going to get motion sick, but if you do, like, give us this. Eh. And for those of you who are listening in audio, it's like a hand kind of in the middle situation. Like, eh, I'm not really doing that great. So I gave them that signal and they were like, okay, here's the protocol. First, we're going to give you some ginger gum and then we're going to give you a washcloth to put on your forehead and then we're going to give you a barf bag so they started handing me the ginger gum and i was like no give me the barf bag right now let's skip let's cut the small talk babe i'm gonna puke right here and now so tyler like there's one video connor has of like tyler cameron having a good time and me just strapped strapped like a like a butt like they could have put her on a gurney and wheeled her away and then they once like we were at a more level gravity experience, they took me to the back where four other girls were already puking their guts out. So the four of us are back there in the back of the plane strapped down while it's still going in parabola. So we're still like being restrained with our seatbelts while we want like our bodies are trying to float and we're all like barfing the entire time and everybody's in the front of the plane like woohoo. And it was probably the worst hour of my life. Meanwhile, I did not want that thing to end. I was having the time of my life. But anyway, no, I would not go up in space. Oh, I would I would sooner, like I would rather, if they were like, you have this free ride with Jeff Bezos and Pete Davidson. Right. Or cut off your foot. Mm-hmm. I'd cut off my foot nine out of ten times. 100% I'd feed it to Sebastian Stan. Nice. Goes without saying. Uh, you should sell it, apparently, because it's good yeah, money. Yeah, sure, why not? I've never been on the black market, but Although I'm, I'm not curious. sure they would want a foot. Just like they were loving oh, the boobs and the ass and I'm sure the, someone, meteor, the meteor parts. I'm sure someone would want yeah. a foot out yeah. there. DM us if you guys want a foot. I'm um, So 
Okay, are you ready for a hot take? Yeah, I think we do one hot take and then we wrap okay, up. Okay, perfect. Been a, it's been a long it's catch been a up long, episode. Yeah, wow. That's awesome. It's so awesome, bro. Literally. Okay, so we got a hot take from Isabella this week. My hot take is that people who grow up without cable TV are a different, good Lord, are a different breed. There is something a little bit off about them if they didn't grow up watching Hannah Montana, iCarly, or The Sweet Life of Zach and Cody. I can't explain it, but they give me such a weird vibe. There is something dot 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 missing. They are missing out on a huge part of the cultural conversation. I feel bad for them, but that's on their parents. Uh huh. Take it away, Brooke. So let me preface by saying I am someone who, like, for better or for worse, probably for worse, did never had a limit on my screen time. Could, my parents were just like, yeah, do kind of do whatever. I sat in front of that TV watching Hannah Montana, That's So Raven, Sweet Life, That's So Sweet Life of Hannah Montana, whatever, for hours on end, e- eating a bag of chips every day. Rarely saw the light of day. And how did I turn out? So good. So good. Literally perfect. Yeah. So, and I never, I did always feel like the people who did not, were not on the same page as me watching these things, like, they are they are fundamentally different than me, which is horrible. And that's no, I'm just kidding. Um, but I don't. I guess there's a difference. Do you feel like they're freaks? I feel like the people who had no, like, didn't know what I was talking about. Amish. It was like, what? Yeah, like you're literally missing a key part of our our youth, our collective youth experience. Yeah. Like, yeah, I did. I, yeah, I did feel like those kids were weird. I think that there is probably a happy medium one step below me of like having some TV access and not unlimited. That was probably the sweet spot, you know, and maybe wouldn't leave you like needing craving fan fiction written about you constantly, yeah. you know? Sure. Um, I, I do. Th- yeah. I think that the okay. people who grew up with no access to it, like they were weird. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I grew up my mom, like, I didn't know, pe- uh, like, people had TVs in their rooms. I Yeah, we I had, didn't have a TV in my room. We had one TV in our living room and yeah. one TV in our game room. Uh-huh. And the game room was for, like, a Dance Dance Revolution, basically. Or, like, uh, Mario yeah. Kart. I don't know, but I, like, I didn't... Did you not watch any of those shows? No, I did, but I don't know, like, I didn't... It's weird, like, TV shows before social media, because, like, what, were we going to school... Just for pure in, like, enjoyment. Fourth grade and being like, did you see the new yes. episode? I don't remember that. Really? That but I don't know. No, I didn't watch too much TV. My mom is like very much uh, drink water uh-huh. and go outside oh. and get sunlight and eat a banana. Um, you know, don't take okay. ibuprofen. Right. I feel like you would expect me, just like the way I am, to have very like involved parents, but they were just like. Do whatever you want. And and what I wanted was just to watch TV. Before, like, we limited screen time. Yeah. And I will say, like, all the babysitting I've done in my life, which is a lot, the parents are almost always no TV, no screen time. Like, you are making it harder for yourself when you do that. Pop an iPad in front of a kid. See if I give a shit. I think that they should all have an iPad just strapped to their eyes. And I also think that, like, sure, like, I probably shouldn't have spent that much time in front of the TV, but I think it, like, produced some good qualities in me. Like, I've got an imagination and a half. You know, I know sure. how to tell a good story. Well, you know what? I think that I don't relate to this so much because I watched, uh, like, Cartoon Network and not uh-huh. Disney Channel. That's fine, as long as you are watching something, I feel. I think I would argue and say screen time is is better than, than no screen time. Now you have to have screen time because yes. you, you, that the cultural conversation you're missing out on is yeah is actual. well even just for kids like I don't understand the parents who are like no you need I will no technology. not well okay I I, I also agree like if you I guess you are a freak if you didn't watch TV at all yeah. growing up like your parents are probably psychos yeah and I think that that probably is gonna stick with you for a while yeah so good luck um, I think that we could touch on this one really quick I think we have one more from Claire my hot take is that all buff men are unattractive skinny men only agree works for me. <laughs> not a hot day. <laughs> I'm not joining Equinox. I agree. Claire. I agree. I, there's like a sweet spot of like, I'm not saying don't have any muscles. Some are fine, but like, if I can see them through your clothes, like immediate, like, ew. whoa, good to know. Yeah. I won't. And I, I always I tell guess, you, Connor is always saying, I want to get muscle. And I'm always no, saying, no, 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 no. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, I have. Do you not want, you say that. You want to. I have a pull-up bar that I use to hang dry my clothes, and that's what its use is. Uh huh. You know that I have in my house. So, 
oh, we don't have to worry. I don't even have to worry about this because I, I, I wrote on my mirror, girls like funny guys. Right. And that's my affirmation in right. the morning. So right. I don't need to go to Equinox. Right. That being said. I would love to have you in the steam room. I would room. love a steam room sesh. Yeah. I'd like to introduce you to Logan. Yeah, why so not? So you can approve or, Maybe or we'll not. Maybe do that. Yeah. Maybe next week we'll talk about my experience I can with Logan. use, I have two guest passes a year. Do you want to come? Sure. This week and we can talk about it next week? Sure. Okay. All right, guys. Thank you so much for listening. We're going to wrap up. Um, yeah. Fun long episode. That was awesome. Yeah, it was loved, really good. I love talking to you today. Next week we have a very exciting guest that is not confirmed yet. Woo! So, so stay tuned. Yeah, but I mean, you know who they are. You will know who they are yeah. should they decide to come. And if not, you'll have no, a, no. you're stuck with us. We, we you're gonna know who our guest is next week, regardless of the outcome of oh, this sure, conversation. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Um, oh, right. All right. Well, thank okay. you guys so much for yep. watching. Like, subscribe. Brooke and Connor make a podcast. Send us. I uh, never know like what's BNC, BNC MAP <laughs> on. Instagram, etc. Hit the like, hit the subscribe, and then email us. Keep emailing us. Hot yeah. takes, obviously. Hot takes are fun. Uh, or, beer, B and C yeah. at gmail.com. And then uh, I think for next week, new new challenge. Um, email us. New challenge. Write a new chapter to the Brooke and Logan fan <laughs> fiction, and I'll be reading every single one. Thank you. E email <laughs> us a, uh, a horrible first date summary. Okay. One. Sure. Yeah. Okay. And we're gonna we'll we'll read one or two. Okay. Cool. Nice one, thinking one, on the fly. One hot take and one horrible first day. Okay. Cool. Like funny though. Don't make it like sad. Okay. That's it's depressing. Yeah. We. Okay. Love okay. you guys. See you Bye. next week. Bye.